Just let us know when you're ready to go. We're good? Okay. So we'll bring the uh, Human Resource Committee to order. First, we'll do a round of introduction. We'll start with the um, NDP. Kendra Coons, Cape Breton Center. Uh, good morning, Claudia Chender, Emily for Dartmouth South. The Conservatives. Brad Johns, MLA for Sackville and Beaverbank. Good morning, everyone. Larry Harrison, MLA for Colchester, Muscadabin Valley. Liberal. Bill Horn. Waverly Fall River, Beaverbank. Rafa Di Costanzo, MLA for Clayton Park West. Anyone else? Liberal side? Suzanne Lonis Croft, Lunenberg, and Vice Chair. Okay. And I'm Brent McGuire, um, MLA for Halifax Atlantic. And if we could get the staff to. Um... Mr. Chair, we have one more member from the okay. Liberal side. I, I don't think Mr. Jessam has clocked in yet. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> ben uh, Hammond's okay. plans with so. And we'll get the staff to introduce themselves, please. So, I'll, I'll start. I'm, Hello? I'm the committee clerk, Judy Kavanaugh. I have counsel. And uh, political staff? Joanne Hussey, NDP caucus. Peter Harrison, PC caucus. No liberal staff? Ray oh. Ann Jewell, Nova Scotia Liberal Caucus. Okay. Off to a, a rough start, but let's go. Um, we'll bring the uh, committee to order, obviously, and we'll start with committee business. I could uh, start with the nominations of people to be on the board. Okay, Mr. Go Horn, on. go ahead. Yep. For the uh, Department of Communities, Culture and Heritage, Nova Scotia Boxing Authority Board. I nominate Barry Bernard as a member, Paul Kerrigan as a member, Jason Kusoff as a member, Marissa McNeil as a member, and Joshua Martin as a member. Any objections, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The motion is passed. Next. Next is the Cape Breton Regional Library Board. It's Bill Horn. Murdoch Moore as a reappointment as a member. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Uh, the next, next, please. Next board is Nova Scotia Museum Board of Governors. I nominate Chester Muse, and he's a, a reappointment as a member. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next. Sorry, uh, this is Rafa Di Costanza, MLA Clayton Park West, and I would like to uh, uh, bring in the nominees for the Department of Health and Wellness. We have first the Board of Directors of the Nova Scotia College of Dispensing Opticians, Marilyn Swaffer, as public representative. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Next, please. Rafa again, uh, the Midwifery Regulatory Council of Nova Scotia. We have two names, Karen Wallace and Laura White, both as public representatives. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Next, please. Also under Health and Wellness, we have the Nova Scotia Board of Examiners, in psychology, we have one name, 
C.B. Mandry as public representative. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next. Mr. Chair, Emily Ben Justin here at the Department of Justice. And I move that Bukumbo Omisad, Bullet Anderson, Laura Bros, and Leanne Conrad all be appointed as members at the Law Foundation of Nova Scotia Board. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. Next, please. Uh, Suzanne Lonis Croft, Lunenburg, for the Department of Labor and Advanced Education, uh, with the Nova Scotia Apprenticeship Agency Board, Charmaine Roma, member of the service sector, and Anne Silly Boy, member at large. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion's carried. Is there any more? That's, That's it. it. That's it. Uh, do we have other committee business? Any? We do, mi Mr. Chair. Are Mr. we supposed John? to review the correspondence? Pardon me? Are we supposed to review the correspondence, or do we just have it in our email? Claudia, Chair. There are, four, there are three pieces of correspondence, and the right. uh, each, just, just to go through each one and make sure there's, to see if there's any discussion right. on them. Okay. So everybody should have those correspondence. Uh, is there any questions or concerns about those correspondence? Mr. Chair, Brad Johns. Mr. Johns. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I, uh, having br brought forward all, uh, I think all three of, uh, these are responses to all three questions that I've raised in the past. I, uh, I do want to thank the, uh, the ministers as well as uh, the staff who've responded to these. Um, I found all the correspondence answers to questions that I had, and uh, particularly the one in regards with uh, communities, culture, and heritage in regards to uh, appointments to the uh, trade uh, uh, events, Halifax and Trade Center. I certainly appreciate that correspondence and clarification as well. So I'm, I'm happy with all of those, and... Uh, I don't know if we send a letter saying that or if the, it just the minutes can reflect that uh, all three answered my questions, and thank you very much. Duly noted, Mr. Johns, and we'll have the minutes reflect that. Mr. Thank Chender, you. Did, you have, did you have something to say, Mr. Chender? I do have a motion I'd like to move if we're moving oh. on to the next agenda item. Pardon me, I, I didn't hear you. I have a motion that I'd like to put forward if we're moving on to the next agenda okay. item. Is there, is there any other um, questions uh, or concerns around the correspondence? Okay, we'll move on to the next thing. Uh, Ms. I recognize Ms. Chender. Thank you. Um, I think uh, the clerk will have sent this around. Um, I, uh, okay. <laughs> Um, we're all aware that Nova Scotia students, teachers, and staff will be returning to school in two weeks for the first time since March. Uh, this will represent the largest reopening in terms of people since we closed down the province, basically, at the end of March. Uh, unfortunately, the plan to reopen schools, the back-to-school plan that was released, is essentially an outline. Um, it indicates a priority of safety, um, but there is not enough detail. Earlier in the spring, Nova Scotia businesses were asked to present detailed reopening plans by sector to the Nova Scotia government. The NSCC was asked to do this for each of its campuses. Uh, but as far as we can tell, schools are sort of being left on their own um, in this case. Our caucus, along with teachers, staff, and families, have many concerns and unanswered questions about how this plan will be operationalized and what it will look like in reality. We have concerns about the reliance on classroom cohorting, uh, as we know with bus rides and after school and extracurriculars, we're going to be talking about multiple cohorts. Um, we are concerned that um, the department and the Minister of Education have said that they um, have no responsibility in terms of guidelines for before and after school care programs, including those offered in schools. 
Um, these are some of the reasons why uh, I put forward at this committee a motion to hold a public forum to hear from teacher staff and families about this plan. Uh, unfortunately, the government members of the committee uh, voted that down. Um, but we continue to want to see this government make the necessary investments and interventions and communications to ensure that schools reopen safely. We want to see more public accountability for these decisions, and we want to see clear communication with teachers, staff, and families. Uh, and therefore, I would like to put forward the following motion. I move that the committee write a letter to the Minister of Education and Early Childhood Development calling on him to publicly release the findings of the ventilation assessments currently being conducted, the number of classrooms in each regional center that will be able to accommodate students while maintaining a minimum of one meter of physical distance, and the plan for ongoing communication with teachers, staff, and parents as we move forward. Any uh, comments? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. Mr. John. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I would say that uh, the PC caucus certainly uh, supports this. Um, as we've raised in the past here at this meeting, and uh, our uh, critic of education, Tim Halman, uh, recently uh, released a letter on behalf of the Nova Scotia Progressive Conservative Caucus. It was an open letter to uh, Minister Ch Churchill expressing uh, 125 questions and concerns that we've heard from constituents and residents across the province of Nova Scotia. and. Uh, as we stated in the past, there seems to be significant concern and anxiety being raised by uh, parents concerned about uh, the well-being of their children. So, you know, uh, this is just one of those many questions that, uh, that we're being asked on a daily basis. Um, so we certainly uh, support the motion that's on the floor before us and uh, we'll support this motion. Any other comments? Mr. Chair, it's Rafa Di Costanzo. Rafa? I'd like to put this as, uh, for a vote, please. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All, Aye. all those opposed? Yep. Nay. Nay. Uh, can we do a recorded vote on this? We, I don't, uh, we, I, I think the recorded vote would have to be called before the vote happened. So okay. you would, you would, uh, maybe we can talk to council about that. But they'd already I voted yes before she requested it. And know who's whether or not the majority yeah. of people are voting. How does that work, Gordon? Um, I think it's appropriate to call for a recorded vote, particularly with the difficulty of of hearing voices. I don't think there's any even after the vote was done. Um, well, I think it's more of, of if, if, I guess the question is, is it, is it to clarify how the vote went or is it, is it to uh, have a Well, I heard four yeses. Mr. Chair. Is the, just one is second, the, Mr. John. Yes. So what, what I'm trying to figure out here, um, I do, it doesn't matter to me either way, but is this, are you, are we setting... You know, if a vote is already cast, are we allowed to go back and say, let's redo this with a recorded vote? If the, if the committee is willing to do that, you can. The norm is, certainly as the chair has suggested, that, that it's asked for before the vote is taken. If it's merely for clarity, of, which sometimes happens, uh, mm -hmm. because you don't know how the voice went, where you would normally ask for people to raise their hands in, in that situation, which you can't, obviously can't do in a teleconference, then that's a, that's a separate issue. So it would be up to the committee to decide if they want to have a recorded vote after a vote has been... Um, so I'll leave it up to the committee to decide. Um, obviously, there was a vote cast, and then the request was put in, um, and I'll leave it up to committee members to decide uh, if we want they want to proceed with a recorded vote or not. Mr. Chair. Mr. John. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would uh, certainly second MLA Chender's uh, motion for a record there. It's very hard, uh, given our, uh, that we're on the phone, to, to know how many people voted what way. I heard two or three of um, things all at the same time, and it was very unclear to me. 
uh, how that vote was. So I would certainly second and support uh, a rec- recorded vote uh, for this and, and probably for every, all motions while we're, uh, while we're doing teleconference. But uh, in this particular case, I would support it for this particular one. Mr. Chair, Claudia Chender. Just, just to clarify and further to Mr. Hebb's comments, uh, my request is, is for clarification. So I can't distinguish individual voices and numbers of voices on the phone. Um, and so I just think for clarity's sake, as long as we are meeting via teleconference and voting on motions, it makes sense to do a roll call. Any other comments? Mr. Chair, it's Kendra Coombs. Yep, Kendra. I'm in agreement with both my colleagues. Okay. Any other comments? Mr. Chair, you just finished saying that you heard four four yet, uh, nays on the side and four yeses. So I'm not sure where the confusion is. And I believe that committee business is at the discretion of the chair um, in terms of the this this scenario. But that's just my observation here. Mr. Chair. So uh, I think the, for clarity's sake, let's go with a recorded vote, uh, if, if everybody's okay with that. Yes, I'm okay with that, Mr. Chair. This is Rafa. NDP and Conservatives, are you okay with that? We are. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chair. We are. Yep. So uh, if, we get the, if we can get the recorded vote call, please. Do you want me to read the names? Yes, this please. Is All right. I'll start with Ms. Coombs. Yes. Ms. Chender? Yes. Mr. Johns? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Jessam? No. Ms. DiCostanzo? No. Mr. Horn? Nay. Ms. Lonis Croft? No. And Mr. McGuire? No. Okay. So that's five no's and four yeses. Is there any other uh, motions or business? Uh, I have uh, a yes. motion, Mr. Chair. Oh, me? And, uh, I'm sorry, MLA Johns? Uh, Mr. Johns? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, as uh, as the uh, progressive conservative uh, critic for African Nova Scotia affairs, I think that it's uh, somewhat incumbent upon me to raise a particular issue. Um, with the uh, recent and ongoing discussions around systemic racism, uh, not only across North America, but here in Nova Scotia as well, um, it's somewhat concerning to me that the Council of African Canadian Education currently has 12 vacancies out of its council of 17 members. Uh, There is another additional vacancy that's coming forward in October, so that will be 13. Um, The the object of this council, Mr. Chair, is to promote the rights and the interests of African Nova Scotians and providing recommendations to the minister on programs and services in public school and on adult education and uh, performs other duties that are are determined by regulations, but that its main uh, concerns is to be able to uh, provide some recommendations. The uh, school boards are supposed to provide the and implement programs and duties as, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, the, the school boards are supposed to provide, implement programs and policies that would promote the African Canadian education including in learning materials, information, uh, respecting history, heritage, culture, traditions, and the contributions of, uh, the, to society of African people and African Nova Scotians. Therefore, Mr. Chair, I'd like to uh, bring the following uh, motion forward, that uh, the committee write a letter to the Minister of Education and copy the Minister of African Nova Scotian Affairs, Uh, a letter on behalf of the committee to address the need to have a full complement of members presented to this committee for consideration at our next meeting. And, Mr. Chair, I feel that, uh, you know, that this would be a first step in addressing racism is education, and uh, education in our schools is vital. 
I'd like to see this committee take the first step today by fulfilling this, uh, helping this committee to fulfill its mandate and address the shortcomings uh, and write this letter to the Minister of Education and African Nova Scotian Affairs. So I would so move that. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Rafa, Rafa. Um, can we take five minutes just to read it properly and then have a, a discussion between us and we'll get back to you? Five yeah, minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, we have, you have till 10.20 seconds. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Hi, Joanne. Hi.
Mr. Chair, could we have an extended recess? Another five minutes, perhaps? I don't think the chair is back yet. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Uh, my phone dropped off there. I've asked uh, for it. This is Suzanne Lonis Cross. I've asked for an extension to the recess. Another me? five minutes, please. Another five minutes? Yes. Okay. Another five minutes it is.
Hello? Can anyone hear me? Yes, I'm yes. It's Judy here. I can hear you. Bill is here. Ms. Lomas Croft, are you there? Do you need an extension? Yes, please. How, how many minutes do you need? Let's take five. Okay.
Mr. Chair? Yes? Um, can we further extend another five minutes, please? Is this, who is this? Suzanne. Okay, okay. Oh. Ms. Thomas Cross, request another five minutes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Are we back on, Mr. Chair? That is up to you. Are we good to go? Ms. Momus Cross? I'm just wondering if everyone's here. Is everybody here? We all is here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Rob yeah. is here. Good to go. Mr. Chair? Who's that? Uh, uh, MLA Johns. Johns? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I can comment on the motion that, uh, that's before us, just to make sure that uh, everybody has some history here. Um, Mr. Chair, the, the establishment of the Council for African Canadian Education was a primary recommendation from the Black Learners Advisory Committee report on education. And I guess my concerns are with, the cur with currently only five of 17 possible members, uh, only five of those positions being filled and another one coming vacant in October, I'm really questioning the commitment of the government towards the African Nova Scotian population and, and the uh, principles laid out in the, uh, in the report. And uh, Mr. Chair, I, I remember back to uh, Mr. Chair, I remember back uh, to the speech that uh, Minister Inst gave in the legislature back in March of 2018 when he was talking about uh, the need for collaboration between the education and, and different government departments, uh, and that collaboration would thereby be better serving for students. Um, and communities that uh, could be perceived as at a disadvantage. And, and Mr. Chair, at that time, I totally supported the comments that the minister made. I thought they were valid and uh, applauded him for bringing those forward. Uh, what, you know, I am concerned and disappointed that uh, despite those comments that uh, there are that many vacancies on this particular uh, committee, and uh, the neglect that's come forward to appointing people to that committee. And I think that, that uh, you know, this is, this is actually an opportunity. The motion that's, that's before us is actually uh, me providing an opportunity to the government to, uh, to rectify the situation and, and not allow it to be seen that it's turning its back on, uh, on the recommendations of the BLAC report. So, Mr. Chair? Suzanne Lonis Croft. Um, I, I, I do not agree with the remarks from the member, um, but um, I want to say that this government has diversified more boards than any other government and will continue to do so. Um, we strongly believe in inclusive recruitment and we are continuing to keep this development going forward but we do not agree with some of the wording in this motion, so this caucus will be turning it down and offering another motion. I call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are we not having all those? Aye. Sorry, Mr. Chair, it's Claudia Chender. I think I thought that we had agreed that we would do a roll call for these motions, just for clarity. Uh, I thought that was just for the last motion, but if everybody wants to let's go. I just think it's easier to tell what the final outcome is. Okay. Uh, I, I just don't know what's changed from now, now and the last four or five meetings we've had, but it's harder for the Let's start the quarter vote. Shall I read the names? Yes, read the names. All right. Ms. Coombs? Yes. Ms. Chender? Yes. Mr. Johns? Absolutely. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Jessen? No. Ms. DiCostanzo? No. Mr. Horn? No. Ms. Lonis Croft? No. Mr. McGuire? No. Mr. McGuire, how do you vote? No. We have five no's and four yeses. Recognize Ms. Lonis Croft. 
Mr. Chair, I move that this committee write a letter to the Minister and CCing the Minister of Africa and Nova Scotia uh, requesting an update on this board and report back at our next meeting. So for that motion, I will read the names again. Uh, Ms. Coombs. Yes. Ms. Chender. Yes. Mr. Johns. Yes. Mr. Harrison. Yes. Mr. Jessen. Yes. Ms. DiCostanzo? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. Ms. Lonas Croft? Yes. And Mr. McGuire? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have a motion. It's Kendra Coombs. Who's that? It's Kendra Coombs. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. As my uh, colleague from Dartmouth, uh, Dartmouth South has pointed out, the reopening of the province schools will be the largest gathering of people in the province since March. Just at that time when all jurisdictions are preparing for a second wave of COVID-19 infections, currently Nova Scotians calling 811 are being told that they are expected to wait 72 hours for a COVID-19 test and up to another 72 hours to receive their test results. During that time, individuals are expected to self-isolate. They cannot go to work or attend school. Many parents are worried about their ability to maintain employment while following public health directives. Government has a role to play in ensuring all workers have access to paid sick days and requiring businesses to accommodate workers with, the, with dependents so that women in particular are not further disproportionately impacted by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. I move that the committee write a letter to the Minister of Labor and Advanced Education calling on him to immediately introduce changes to the Labor co Standards Code to provide paid leave to all workers in Nova Scotia and communicate with all employers to remind them that accommodation of employees with ongoing care, care responsibilities is required by law because of family status is protected ground under the Nova Scotian Human Rights Act. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Johns. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Mr. Chair, we'll uh, support this. Uh, I know that members of the PC caucus uh, are getting contacted uh, by, by residents uh, throughout the province with concerns around what may be the outcome of uh, the school reopening in September. Uh, as I stated before, there's a lot of concerns in regards to lack of planning uh, with the reopening of the schools, and particularly, uh, which, which comes directly to this motion, many people are concerned what's going to happen if, uh, if their child does return to school and unfortunately... Uh, it gets COVID-19 and then has to isolate 14 days. That also means that the family members would have to isolate 14 days. And there's a lot of uncertainty in regards to uh, what the impact that would be on uh, people's jobs and sources of income, uh, with, that they would then have to take an additional 14 days and potentially longer than that um, to self-isolate if their kids end up getting COVID at school. So. Uh, the PC caucus uh, supports writing a letter to the minister. Mr. Chair, it's Kendra Coombs. Who's that? Kendra? Kendra Coombs, yes. Um, just for clarity, can we have a recorded vote, please? All right. Um, Ms. Coombs? Yes. Ms. Chender? Ms. Chender? Yes. Mr. Johns? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Jessen? No. Ms. DiCostanzo? No. Mr. Horn? 
No. Ms. Lonis Croft? No. Sorry, Ms. Lonis Croft? Oh, no. Mr. McGuire? No. We have five no's and four yeses. Just, just a reminder to all members to put it back. That committees don't set policy. That's up to the government and the and the legislature to do that. Um, we have a role to play. But the role, one of the roles that uh, we don't do is is actually set and put in play committee. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, policy and legislation. Uh, is there any other uh, uh, committee business? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Ms. Chender. Uh, well, just. Uh, I'd like to point out that the motions today uh, were all to write letters to the relevant ministers uh, requesting various things. Um, I don't think any of that would constitute policy setting. Well, one uh, I would further, I think it's one worth. Of them was I'd like to policy. finish. I'd like to finish. I think I have the floor, Mr. Chair. Um, further, I would like to say that uh, this. Uh, the elected MLAs in Nova Scotia have not had the opportunity to meet in any policy-making forum uh, since this pandemic started uh, many, many months ago. And so we are left with the Human Resources Committee as the only committee that cannot be stopped by a, the Liberal majority. And therefore, this is our venue to put forward uh, the suggestions, the ideas, um, and the concerns that we hear from our constituents. We are elected to represent our constituents and to put forward their concerns, and this is the only venue in which we are meeting. We are not attempting to set policy. We are conveying um, our concerns and our ideas to the relevant ministers. Thank you, Matt. and I would say that uh, I appreciate your comments, but there's also rules and regulations around this committee uh, that we have to follow. Um, and I do know uh, yourself as the uh, representative of the, um, the House leader, I do know that there's ongoing discussions between yourself and the other House leaders uh, around committees and legislation. So we do look forward to that, uh, that information coming forward and, and being brought to all of us. Uh, is there any other motion Mr. Chair. on the floor? Mr. Chair, Brad John. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So two things. First of all, uh, uh, just for clarification, uh, the uh, PC caucus uh, certainly agrees with uh, all the comments that uh, the previous speaker, uh, MLA Chender, just made, and uh, we certainly do not uh, preview any of what uh, is coming forward here today. As policy setting it is uh, writing letters to particular ministers is what are the requests. And uh, we certainly support all the comments that Ms. Chender just made. Mr. Chair, having said that, I'd like to put the following motion on the floor, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, with the economic situation as a result of COVID-19 and the looming uncertainties about jobs and future labour negotiations, it is incumbent by us as a committee to consider the effects this may have on future negotiations. Members of this committee, we notice that the our arbitration advisor committee, Mr. Chair, is currently without a chair, and any members for that. In fact, there's no chair, there's no members. The object of this committee is that it provides advice to the minister respecting the selection of arbitrators and matters relating to the arbitration, realizing that the government has not considered arbitration as a valuable tool during the recent years and that leadership is changing. Maybe it's now time to consider that we actually fill this committee, Mr. Chair. Therefore, I move that the Minister of Labour and Advanced Education be sent correspondence copied to the Minister of Labour Re Relations recommending that the mandate of the Arbitration Advisory Committee be fulfilled by recommending a chair and appointing members to serve on this committee and be brought back for the attention of this committee, the HR committee, before the end of this calendar year. So moved. Mr. Chair, we may need a little more time here. I, I'm not comfortable voting on the motion until I have it in front of me. Uh, so I would suggest perhaps we extend the meeting uh, just a little bit in fairness to have that motion considered. So how long are we going to extend the 
committee meeting for, please? Well, let's 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 say five five minutes because we don't have uh, again. I don't have the motion in front of me, yet, and I don't feel comfortable voting until I see that. Thank you. You should have the. You're asking for a five-minute break to review the motion that's put in front of you? Yes, please. Okay. Mr. Why Chair, this is Rafa. Mr. Chair? Yes? I believe we should Rafa? do at least... Mr. Chair, I believe we should do at least 10 I minutes. Can't. At least 10 minutes? Five minutes is not going to okay. be enough for us. Thank you. Okay. 10 minutes. It's recess. Thank you. Judy? Hello? Hi, Judy. Sorry, I just uh, lost a permit and had to call back in. It's Brad Johns. Oh, sure. No problem. Thank you.
Mr. Chair, I think we're ready to go here. Let's get going. Mr. Chair. Mr. Cohen. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm, I'm not quite sure why, uh, why the recess. I, I recognize uh, the member said it was to, uh, to read the, uh, read the motion. I, I clarify that, that basically, uh, you know, Mr. Chair, this, this is a request. Uh, for this committee to write to uh, the appropriate ministers, Labor Advanced Education, um, and ask and recommend that there be appointments made to uh, the Arbitration Advisory Committee. There's no, no appointments, there's no members, and there's no chair currently of that committee. And, uh, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward motion. All we're asking is for a letter to be written and... Uh, to get those appointments done by the end of the year. So I'm, I'm confused as to uh, why we needed to take a long recess there, but I just wanted to clarify that so, motion. So, Mr. Johns, the members of the committee have the right to request a um, recess, um, I, and so it is up to uh, myself as the chair, and I would treat every single member the same. If you wanted to have a 10-minute recess right now to discuss something that's put on the floor, uh, I wouldn't deny it. So uh, they have the right to request it. And uh, uh, as for my uh, my position as chair, uh, I, I would approve it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I certainly uh, recognize that. Thank you. No problem, sir. Uh, okay, There's a. is there a motion on the floor, or do we want more discussion on this? Vote. Mr. Chair, I'd like I'd Question. like to do a vote, recorded vote, uh, and we have passed the time for this, and we ha we all have appointments after. I think we need to do a recorded vote and, and uh, adjourn the meeting as soon as possible, if Mr. Chair. Question. Question. Okay. Uh, let's start the recorded vote. All right, uh, Ms. Coombs. Yes. Ms. Chender? Yes. Mr. Johns? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Jessen? No. Ms. DiCostanzo? No. Mr. Horn? No. Ms. Lonis Cross? No. Mr. McGuire? No. We. So that's five no's and four yeses. So we're up against time here. Uh, we have run over uh, the allotted time for the committee meeting. Mr. Chair. Mr. Johns. Yes, I uh, would move the motion that we extend the meeting by 15 minutes, please. There's a motion on the floor. I'm yes. Mr. Chair, I have to leave. I have an appointment I have to get to. Same well, for then, me. So that's, we'll put it to a vote, uh, recorded vote. Let's, uh, let's move this forward. All right. Ms. Coombs? Yes. Ms. Chender? Yes. Mr. John? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Jessen? No, no. Ms. DiCostanzo? No. Mr. Horn? No. Ms. Lonis Croft? No. Mr. McGuire? No. Five so no's that, and four yes. So with that, the meeting is over. Uh, could the clerk just uh, let us know when is the next meeting for Human Resources? It will be the last Tuesday of September. September 29th, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you. Maybe we'll see you before then. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.